Hello everyone, it's Robin the Delta Crafter and I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. Today I am so honored to be partnering with Spellbinders for their 20th anniversary birthday celebrations release. For 20 years, Spellbinders has been providing the crafting community with amazing products for us to express our creativity with. I'm so happy to be able to partner with them for this release. Let's get into what I'm going to be creating today. Like I often do, I decided to sketch out my ideas on one of my card planner templates that can be found in my Etsy shop. I'll have that linked in the description below. So I'm going to be working on the very first card that uses the Balloon Party Animal Spellbinders die set. I'm going to be pulling in an older basic circle set also from Spellbinders. This is the standard small circle set. I thought I was going to be able to use the birthday stamp set from Hero Arts, but I decided not to use a sentiment at all. And I'm also going to be using the Dimensional Stars Embossing Folder from Simon Says Stamp. As always, I'm going to be using a couple of pieces of Nina Classic Crest Solar White in the 80 pound weight. And this time I'm going to be using some of the metallic threads from Altenew. Let's get started. So I want to go ahead and create my background first. This particular um, card creation is going to be all die cuts. There is no stamping on this card. So but, and to create some dimension and texture, I'm using this 3D embossing folder that has so much depth to the stars. And I really, really like that. That's going to add a lot to my background. In order to create my balloons, I just decided to pull some scrap pieces of cardstock from my stash. I used that standard circle set to create two balloons, one in blue and one in yellow. So I'm going to tape down a couple of dies to my scrap pieces of paper, take them over to my die cutting machine and cut them out. Now it's time to use the balloon party animal die set. I think this is one of the cutest sets in the release and be sure to check out my Instagram to see how else I used it. So I, off camera I went ahead and die cut the balloon animal and now I'm punching out all the pieces. Notice that there are pieces that you layer, you can layer up in order to create dimension and I'm going to do that a little bit later on. I was feeling like the balloon animal might read a little flat. So I decided to grab my white jelly roll pen and add some highlights to uh, certain parts of the balloon, the parts that I was going to be able to pop up. So I'm going to go through, I think this is a number 10 pen, a jelly roll pen, and add some highlights to some of the areas um, just to jazz it up a little bit. I didn't do any inking or provide any other type of texture on the die cuts so I felt like just adding this jelly roll was just a just a small little touch that it needed. So now I'm going to turn over the pieces that are loose and add some dimension to them using some pieces of foam tape. So we have the dimension that we created with the 3D embossing folder and now we're going to add a little bit more dimension by popping up these pieces of the uh, balloon animal. So once all the pieces and uh, the backer tapes have been removed, I'm going to apply these individual pieces to the animal, the balloon animal base. And I just love seeing that little bit of shadow that's created when you use that foam tape. Um, it just adds to, to adds a lot to a card. To create a realistic balloon effect I'm going to be using some metallic thread from Altenew as the strings for my balloons. Because the strings will be coming from my balloons and dangling off my card I want to make sure that my strings are strongly secured to the back of my elements. So I'm going to use some really strong double-sided tape in order to secure the string in several places to the back of each of the balloons. So I'm going to put several pieces of this tape um, down and I'm going to sandwich the string in between the element and the, the, um, the double sided tape. So I've got my blue string, my blue balloon done and now I'm doing the yellow one. And then I'm going to place both of those onto my background. 
This is also going to help make sure that my elements stick to my background because remember this background has three dimensional stars all over it. So it's not a flat surface. So using this strong double sided tape really helps um, adhere the elements to the card. So here I'm using a smaller or thinner um, size of that same tape to put on the back of the balloon animal. And I actually forgot to sandwich the, um, the string in between the tape and the element. But it's okay because I'm going to fix it in just a second and I'm going to make sure that, that that string is secured to my element. After I remove the backer from the tape, I'm able to secure my string to my balloon animal right there in the middle of the body. So I'm just going to take this string and press it into the middle of the body and kind of run it down so that make sure that it is nice and secure. I trim the string, remove the backer from the remaining pieces of tape on the back of this balloon animal. And with my tweezers, I'm going to line the balloon animal on top of the two other balloons that are on the card so that you can see those two balloons in between my balloon animal. So it's like making a balloon bouquet. Adding the dimension to the balloon animal really helps give some lift to all the balloons in the balloon bouquet. So I decided that I wanted to make a bow around all my balloon strings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to triple layer some strings pieces of this thread rather and I'm going to cut them off so that in, I end up with three pieces of the silver thread. So I made a couple of loops and then cut my loops where I ended up with the three pieces of thread. So I attempted this a couple of times and so in my first attempt I thought I was just going to be able to pick up the strings and tie my loop loops rather um, and that everything would cooperate and go well um, well it did not <laughs> the, the I didn't count on the bottom strings or those the loose strings that are attached to the balloons just moving all over the place so I use the things around me this is a glass media mat from glassboard studio and it is magnetic and I have a couple of really strong mag magnets that um, I got from glass glassboard studio as well and so I decided to place one of those magnets on the strings and then I'm able to slide my strings that I'm going to be using for my bow up under there while the magnet holds those loose strings from the balloons in place. And so now I'm going to be able to tie my bows, uh, tie a bow around all of the strings from the balloon bouquet. Having this magnetized board and being able to use the magnet in this way helped a lot to be able to add this this uh, decorative element to the card so you see there now i'm gonna fiddle and fuss with the with the strings a little bit to kind of get them exactly where i want them to be and make sure that my bow loops are um in, you know similar in size because that's important and pull these loose strings Kind of get, get everything in the right place and get my bow, uh, my loose bow strings kind of all moving towards the bottom of the card. Takes a little bit of fiddling, but you can get it done. And so I kind of like the where, where the bow ends up and I really don't want it to move. So I thought that I would add a, a, just a drop of some Barely Arts glue into the center of the bow, um, up under the center of the bow rather should I say, just to hold it in place. So the strings at the bottom will be free and able to move, but the bow itself will be secured down with some Barely Arts glue. I think this was a, a good idea um, because it, like I said, it keeps my bow in place and kept, instead of just kind of free floating all over the card, but it'll, it still allows the strings at the bottom to be free floating. So I don't want to trim off my um, ends of my strings just yet because I want to see where I'm going to end up, um, where I want the strings to end up once I get everything secured to the card base. 
This card base is made with Accent Opaque 120 pound cardstock. And all of the products that I'm using today will be linked on my coordinating blog post for this video. I did go ahead and put some strong at, uh, tape runner on the back, but I decided to go ahead and pop up this card panel. And so I added some foam tape to the back of the card panel as well. And so now that I have that card panel secured to the card base, I did want to have just a tiny bit of the strings hanging down. So I trimmed them a little bit longer than the card itself. And now that the panel is secured to the card, to the card base rather, this card is complete. I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. You can always find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Delta Crafter. And please be sure to stop by my blog and website at thedeltacrafter.com. If you haven't done so already, consider joining the family by subscribing to this channel and giving me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Again, everyone, thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great day. Enjoy!